How is it going everybody? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today's video is something going to be short and simple. And what does it have to do with your cooling system on your car? So let's get to it. Now this will cover just basically almost any car in the GM line from the early 90s to the mid to late 90s, including the Camaro, the Caprice Classic, the Impala SS's, the trucks, anything that has an LT1 in it. And the reason that this is important, number one, the LT1 is a camshaft driven water pump, so it actually spins backwards compared to your regular water pumps. So it's important to make sure you get all the air out of it, and there's several reasons for that. Number one, the air pocket can cause the the coolant to actually lock up in the system. In other words, not go past the air pocket. It can cause the car to overheat. It can cause your car to the gauge to act crazy. If one minute it's right, then it'll flop all the way up to the top or all the way to the bottom. That's just a few of the reasons. There are more, but that is just a few of the reasons. And the way you typically get air in your system if you replace the water pump, if you replace the radiator, a radiator hose, a thermostat, or if you are if you have to add over a gallon of antifreeze to your car, it is recommended that you do this. It's very simple. Anybody with a screwdriver can do it, so let me show you how. Now here we are up under the hood, just so you know where everything at. Got your radiator cap, your coolant reservoir where you actually feel the coolant and your bleeder screw which is right here this is where we're going to be bleeding the air out of the system and it is very 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 simple like i said if you have to replace the water pump or one of the radiator hoses for any reason then you'll need to perform this and this is it's super simple so let's get to it now the first thing i like to do is i like to take a screwdriver and actually crack the system the the nipple loose to make sure that it's not really tight okay and then i just barely barely snug it then you're going to take your radiator cap off. You're going to fill up your radiator with the proper antifreeze. Then you'll put the cap back on. Then you're going to come over, take out your coolant reservoir cover and dipstick. Shake it off as you pull it so you're not dripping antifreeze everywhere. Set it to the side. You'll take your coolant, whatever it says to put in it, and I use Dex Cool in this one because it's a GM and it actually recommends Dex Cool for my year and everything. You can see right there, Dex Cool. Then you're going to top it off. Okay. Try not to spill it everywhere. Okay, you're going to put some in it, then you're going to take your dipstick and put it back in. Screw it down, and screw it, and then you're going to pull it out, and look and see how high the, the wetness goes. I'm actually up to warm hot, but that's okay because we're bleeding the system. So let's start this bad boy up. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take the yeah, selector, put it up on defrost. We're gonna put the heat all the way up and we're gonna turn the fan all the way up. And what that does by turning the heat up, that allows all the heat and all the hot water and everything to circulate through your heater core, which is located behind the stash. If you don't do that, that's as bad as having an air pocket up there. And eventually it'll move up to there. And like I said, it could possibly block your system off and everything. So we wanna turn the heat on and we're going to monitor it and watch it, watch it and make sure it gets hot. And we're going to monitor our temperature gauge also and make sure it heats up. But more importantly, we're going to watch that bleeder screw out. So now we've got this turned on, we're going to crank it up. Let it idle back down. Check, make sure you got air coming out and I can hear it coming out of the defrost. Now I'm going to tell you right now what to do and then I'll go up to the car and do it. Now you want to back that bleeder screw up, out a pretty good ways. I, sometimes I take mine all the way out. It's not going to just shoot out, it's going to roll out when it's ready.
The important thing is, is not to drop it. I mean, I can leave it right there and that's fine, but as you can see, the thermostat has not opened up yet, so there's no water coming out. So we're going to take this and just lightly put it back in there, like so, and wait on the car to heat up. Now, as your car is running and as your car is cycling and everything, you want to check your coolant reservoir to make sure that it doesn't go all the way low because if it runs out of coolant, then you're putting air in your system. And you don't want that. This, we're doing this to get the air out of the system. So constantly check your coolant reservoir and make sure that you have coolant in it. Now if you look right, I'll show you real quick, there's actually water starting to bubble out. Now what we're wanting to see is a steady stream coming out. Not just bubbles. As you can see, the heat gauge is starting to go up. Check your heat. Yes, I feel heat coming out of it. I just checked the fluid level. And we have a steady stream coming out almost. Like I said, once that starts coming out like that, you're not hurting anything. But once you see a steady stream coming out, shut it off. And that is all there is to it. Just take your screwdriver, snug it back down. You don't want to cinch it down because it's a brass fitting. You can strip it out. But just take it, tighten it down about how it was. You'll be able to tell. And you're done. Top off your coolants again if it needs it. You know, check them. If it needs it, top them off. Leave the radiator cap on. Do it at the coolant reservoir because by opening up the radiator, you could possibly put air back in the system. So do all coolant filling and everything from your coolant reservoir. And if you feel like you still might have a little air in it later on, repeat the process. It doesn't hurt anything. Just make sure you have coolant on hand to go back in there, the correct coolant. Do not put water in it. I took mine and had my system flushed one time and they filled it back up and all that stuff. And I drove it for, I don't know, probably three weeks. Then I decided to check my coolant. And when I check, get over here, I try to get you out of the wind. When I when I decided to check my coolant, I looked, I opened up my cap, and it was full of rust. I'm like, what in the heck? These systems are designed for a specific coolant. If you put water in it, the water reacts with the the metals and stuff in there, and it creates rust. It'll block up all the pores. It'll block up all the coolant passages and everything. And come to find out, they had put water in my system they put a gallon and a half of regular antifreeze in it and then a gallon of water in it i'm like why in the world would you do that well we ran out so i had <laughs> i was so ticked off you would not believe so and the reason i did it to, had them do it was because i wanted the complete system flushed out every bit of the old antifreeze out when they got it out they almost destroyed my cooling system so a long story short use the proper coolant proper coolant but that's all there is to it and it's so i hope you uh, learned how to do this it's super easy i can do it you can do it just the screwdriver is all it takes and a gallon of, of antifreeze or two maximum and you too can get the air out of your system so until next time guys and gals i hope you enjoyed this video we'll see you in the next one thanks a lot for watching